In the spirit of International Women's Day, which took place on the 8th of March 2020 and has done so for over a century, this month is a global celebration of the social, economic and political achievement of women. In that spirit, Tea Time has decided we will not be left out in celebrating our amazing women. We love our men doing amazing things, but this show is going to be all about women for women and by women. Join us in the studio to discuss women-related issues are Ekene Ezeji and Ebele Moluwa. Ekene is an experienced television producer, a wife and a mother, while Ebele is a vocal feminist who has worked on various women-led protests like Say Her Name Nigeria and church me too and of course i have my amazing co uncle if i all right <laughs> hi hello hi. it is an honor to have you both here mm -hmm. yeah. okay did you do anything well. special for international women's day <laughs> did you? I, I sent messages to some women that i really you know i wanted okay. to encourage them so yeah, nice. yeah. okay Mm, okay, so, okay, now. Yeah, well, it's over to me then. I'll be taking this segment. So, mm -hmm. um, I'll be talking about self-confidence and owning our spaces and what it means for each person and what we think it looks like. Competition amongst women actually steps to achieve real confidence. So, I want to, we're going to be looking at the steps to achieving real confidence. Um, I want to start with a quote by Ian Love Vazant, and that says, Loving yourself has nothing to do with being selfish, self-centered, or self-engrossed. It means that you accept yourself for what you are. Loving yourself means that you accept responsibility for your own development, growth, and happiness. And with that, I want to kick off this session on self-confidence and owning our own spaces. Mm -hmm. I like the use of that term, owning our spaces. We tend to use a lot of terminology, and sometimes we understand what we mean. Other times, it's like we're lost in translation. So today, we're going to be doing straight talk, mm -hmm. no cliches, or as Ife would put it, <laughs> no lullaby motivation tips, please. <laughs> So we're going to be breaking down what self-confidence means to mm. each person yeah. and why, because this conversation comes up often, that why women seem to end up competing against themselves. Maybe you have a lot to say about that rather mm. than being <laughs> each other's cheerleaders <laughs> and how we get from self-depreciating dispositions like imposter syndrome mm. to achieving real self-confidence, mm. owning and even autographing our own space, a.k.a. Mm. I was born for this. Right. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, do, I, I, do you want to say something? I love that, you know, we are actually talking about this. Um, for someone like me, and I speak for a lot of people, millennials who are just in the break of starting their life or starting their careers and stuff, we have no idea what we're doing. We all want to be successful. We all want to be confident, act confident, and be comfortable in our skin and blah, blah, blah. But the truth of the matter is that we're all freaking out and we don't know what it looks like. Honestly, when you say that, that's a surprise <laughs> to me because a lot of millennials, I look at them and I'm really... I don't know, I have a lot of admiration for yeah. a lot of young ladies because uh, what they're dealing with is quite... It is. Quite I mean, and I'll give us props where, you know, I'll, give, I'll, I'll tap our backs where we have, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot we can learn, especially from people like you that have already been in the space a lot longer. And, and when we're talking about, like, corporate spaces especially, okay. we have no idea what we're doing. For me, I think I'll come from a personal experience and what I deal with. So, you know, when it comes to imposter syndrome and when people talk about it, it was recently I realized that there is a name for what it is I deal with, which is imposter syndrome. Mm. And I, I'm still finding it difficult to accept that fact because I'm not the kind of person that would blow my trumpet. I feel like when the job is done, the job is done. Mm. I did it, I did it well. And most times I look at it as a collaborative effort. Yeah. Even when I know that I put in more than 70% to get the job done um, and others were busy scrambling around the 20%. I still want to admit that it is a team effort yeah. and that I cannot be who I am today without the help well, of why every... Do you feel the need to do that? I don't know. I feel like... I feel like I just have that personal need to appreciate everyone's efforts, no mm -hmm. matter how little it is. So I'm, I won't be the kind of person to want to shout to the moon or anywhere that, oh, I got this award or, oh, I was the brain behind this project. Mm -hmm. I think I'm that kind of person that wants to sit back to say, okay, this was done well and it was done good and I'm moving on to the next thing. Um, so I'm deliberately trying to project. blow my own trumpet <laughs> to say, mm. I was behind this project, I was behind this conversation, mm. I started this, mm. you know, and I, I, I still don't see myself as doing something wrong. I'm surprised because you're in the media space a lot. Yeah, you don't. Mm -hmm. yeah but um, what intrigues I, I, me is that a lot of women have that yeah, no, disposition. I think, I, think it's a, I think it's conditioning. Right. I think women as a whole have just been taught to just not blow their trumpet because yeah. imagine a woman coming and saying, oh yes, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. And other people are like, oh, why is she shouting? Mm. Like, it's not, I think it's something we've all just learned to just 
not say what we've done because yeah. it just makes us look more humble and yeah. it makes us look a bit more like, like you're fashion. a woman, you're proper, yeah. you're not really shy, you're not proud because yeah. we're not meant to be proud. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it makes sense that a lot of women are dealing with that and that's why I'm really happy with the way millennials, like you said, are handling it is, even if they're not doing that much, yeah. they're, they're, they're saying it. Like yeah. They're just putting it <laughs> yeah. out there because they just want everybody to know, I'm doing this, yeah. I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And I think it's something that we're gradually yeah. breaking out of. Yeah. Like now, like women are saying like, oh yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Yeah. I have to agree with you on that because mm. I don't have that problem. Well, I get the social the conditioning problem. thing, yeah. right? Mm. But when I'm looking at it from this angle, even when mm. it's a guy coming out to say, I did this and I did mm, that. I feel like, still, why are you making noise? Mm, like, okay, you've done it. Move on to the next thing. I think mm, that is just has to be a bridge who I am, right? Because the millennial thing, I'm, uh, that one gets to me a bit. I'm not mm. sure. Sometimes, my, my own personality, talking about I, I, millennial I, don't, I like things. substance. I don't want right. to say I see what, what they say they've doing. done yeah, and right. I tell myself I've done way more than this. Mm. I never exactly. thought of, exactly. like, okay, I think there's something these people are doing right that I need to learn. Mm. I think for us, um, we are... A, a, we are a let's say a generation that people undermine a lot. Like yeah. you, you want the fast life. You want you don't want to grow. You don't want to do this. You're you don't lazy. want to do this. And <laughs> I think they forget that our struggles just look very different. So we have a culture of talking about it. Mm. I'm not gonna have a problem with that ever. I feel like my problem is that I, I talk about it too much that I get comfortable in my space. Mm. So I'm saying that oh okay for example this show I it's my idea or something. I'm not mm. gonna be ashamed to say that. In fact I want everybody to know. But that, I think the flip side with that is that the, you, the problem you get with that is that you for forget that there's more you can do and if you're too busy horning blowing your own horn about what, you have about done, what you've done you, you are forward, not that motivated to do more well i guess maybe looking at it because we'll, we'll probably move on to something else but looking at it from another perspective how i came upon the imposter syndrome was last year i was watching tennis and i saw i watched the match between serena williams you know like the end match and then i watched the men's match and the way they were Two, two, two. Mm. And I said to myself, these women are playing like they're apologizing. And this is yeah. Serena Williams at the top of her mm. game. And I recognized myself in that. And I said, mm. you know, even when people put me in a position to do something, I want to be perfect yeah. before I out myself. And yet you see men, you know, they just come there and, and, and they're ready to take the yeah. space. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So you just feel like you're not worthy. Somehow in your mind, you want to really be at the top of your game right. before you now get on the big stage. Whereas the men just land there and they learn on the job. I also feel like women really underestimate how good they are. Mm. That's, that's exactly what Because even as mediocre as you feel like you are, you're still better than a lot of the men that's that the actually thing. put yeah. themselves yeah. out yeah. there. And I think mm. we just have a, we have this nature of just, we don't count our victories as victories. Yes. We just count them as, eh, By that's what, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was, was lucky enough. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was a team effort <laughs> and yeah. But then what do you think? Because you said when, when we do the millennial thing, mm. you, it doesn't, you don't, you're not. Yeah, mean, I have a problem with that because I feel that there's too much, um, do you say, forming. Mm. Um, and I, I want <laughs> substance. So I prefer the other way. I prefer when you say less. And then I see that you actually have you, more. But you now I find that everybody knows how to package. Mm. And then when you now stay with the person long enough, you realize that, okay, maybe yeah, like really. 50, 60% is packaging. Mm. I would rather discover that you undersold yourself. That's my own. I prefer people right. who are understated. Mm. But since as a millennial, so it's a lot of times now when I see people projecting, I'm waiting for the dust to settle. Because I'm mm. thinking, let's wait and see what you actually what are made really of. Yeah. There's so. a part of your... Um, Intro. intro that we have on touch where you said women competing against Please each other she said you were going to talk about it so, so have I you experienced mm. that i don't so i i get the idea but i don't agree with it okay mm. and i don't agree with it in the sense that i think the idea again conditioning i think it comes from this idea that women first of all are not meant to compete with each other I think there's this idea that women are meant to be, you know, holding hands and jolly and everything. Yeah. But if you see something, someone has it, you want it, you go for it. Yeah. That's how I see it. I don't Maybe see you're looking at competition in the way, in the, what came to mind when mm. I thought of that was this perception of women as backbiting, catty. But we all do know, it. Backstabbing. Yeah, it's a human thing. You're right, actually. Let me even agree with that mm -hmm. first. But yeah. I'm trying to say, you know, where I'm coming from when I think of why women may tend to do it mm. in a way that jars or makes people notice it more is that, when, this is a perception I'm stereotyping yeah, yeah. now, mm. when women gather together, we don't often tell ourselves the truth, it seems. Right. We tend to want to, you know, mollycoddle ourselves a bit, pamper ourselves. So you say, oh, you look really nice, but you, you know, you don't, you know, the straight talk doesn't seem to be right. as normal. And so you still have that perception about that person and you go behind the person's back and say it. So I wish we had more women who were mm. more direct with each I, other. I, I think one of the things I've noticed with, with me personally is that the space that I, I have competed with women are spaces that are hard for women to get into to begin with. Mm. Okay. Um, and so there is this viciousness that 
a man isn't really my competition, even though it's a very skewed way of really? thinking. Mm -hmm. um, that the man is in my competition. Yeah. The woman, even if the woman sense. is not even in my caliber, like let's say I'm, I'm actually much better, and there's no there's no actual competition, mm -hmm. right? But I still just always tend to you go to the her. woman yeah. more so like so it's about how she dresses and is that getting her benefits do I need to change my dressing or how she talks is like I, I, like copy that what do they want mm -hmm. I think we've always sometimes as a woman one of my biggest struggles is that I feel like I have to perform I have to be something or in a certain way mm -hmm. so I, I then look at other women like oh so what are you doing oh your hair or oh okay so what does that mean and how do they treat that person that does the certain things well, do I want to be treated positive, like that mm -hmm. I, I like, I like how you put it yeah. Yeah. But yeah. for me I, I, I used to have that mindset to say women are not competing with mm -hmm. each other for a very long time until mm -hmm. it hits me and I realized that a lot of women you, you, the thing is we are here and I can say to an extent we are enlightened and exposed Mm -hmm. and their ways would relate but a lot of women see themselves as competition when is it, it comes bad? to it it is saying. bad definitely okay. so you get let me use the most mundane example you go into an event if i'm walking into an event and of course i do digital marketing and i see my digital marketing colleagues guys mm. it's easy for me to flow like they are ready to speak to you as mm -hmm. you're coming in. They're like, oh, hi, Elsie, it's been a while, how are you? Mm -hmm. But you cannot get that same energy when you walk into a room full of ladies. Everybody has their nose high and, oh, if she doesn't see me first and say hi first. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one attitude we need to deliberately, like, I know it's not going to stop or just stop abruptly, mm -hmm. but we need to deliberately take that attitude out of what I don't know if it's going to be from the way we train up the next generation to say, you have to have cutsy. That's a long not time just, I, I, I think I mean, it has, I, 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 maybe it's just me. I still just, first of all, I think we're taking the idea of competition for women a bit more seriously than we do with men. Mm. Because men compete. men compete to the point where they're killing themselves. Mm. Gang rival, th like, it's a, it's, that's a whole different scope. Mm. But then we seem to hammer on this, women are competing, women are competing, mm. like it's not happening. And that's, I, I think that's why I have a problem with it because right. it happens across both genders, but we seem to be hammering it with women because Society is also trying to instill that competition in us yeah. because it happens with men. And I think what you're saying boils down to what she's saying where the men don't necessarily see you as competition because yeah. in, their, in their world, it's their world. Right. So when you come in, they're obviously going to be like, oh, hey, but in their head, it's they like... They don't feel threatened yeah. by you. They're not, they're not threatened they, by the you because to you're a woman. You then then you'll be dealing with the same... Yeah, yeah but probably. then you're going to feel threatened mm. by a woman because that space wasn't created for you. It's a man's world, apparently. Mm. So... Any woman that steps in there, if another woman is coming in, you're going to feel like, oh, she's coming to take my spot. Okay, oh, I wish yeah. I could respond to that, but yeah. we need to go <laughs> on I had a, a quick thought. break. <laughs> and when we come back, we definitely have more to discuss. All right. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> at Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling all right. Minimal mm. Akpala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early, sleeping early. Okay, welcome back. So, we're going to start with the second segment. Um, Audrey Lord says, I write for those women who do not speak, for those who do not have a voice because they were so terrified because we are taught to respect fear more than ourselves. We've been taught that silence would save us, but it won't. The most important part at the core of the feminist movement, regardless of what form it takes, is giving women a voice. Gender equality movement is letting women know that their voice matters. It's not necessarily trying to make women stronger because women are already strong. It's just letting the world recognize the humanity in women and treating us as deserving of being heard, not for anything else, but just the fact that we are women um, and the fact that we are human. So um, basically, I think we should just, we need to recognize the importance of our voice as women. I think 
over the past two, three years or so, we've been having a lot of movements of women speaking up, mm. different NGOs coming forward, activists in different countries in different ways. And to an extent, when a group of people start speaking a lot, you start wondering, ah, why are these people making noise? Mm. Um, so it's first of all important for us. I think we should start with recognizing why it's important for us to speak, why it's important for our voice to be heard amongst the many different voices that we're hearing in society. Yeah, um, I, I think one of the things that rings in my mind um, on the show was previously when we talked about a lady, a, a, a fat, well, I don't know what we call them, what's the political plus correct size. word, plus size, <laughs> a plus size lady coming out to question the AMVC award, fashion, say, fashion award that they are not inclusive of women, uh, of, of plus size women in their categories. And it made me think that it was one of like those light bulb moments that that is why you need a voice because I would have never used my voice to say that. I don't yes, have that issue. And that's why it, it really down strung me that what I'm thinking that I don't need to say and it's not really important and maybe I'm the only one going through it could actually be the detriment of, you know, part of the problem because mm -hmm. if I spoke up for someone, I could be speaking for a lot of people that are thinking that and that's why that was the first time I saw that, okay, this thing actually has power because mm -hmm. then I, as a non-plus size person, is also thinking of their issues and, and mm -hmm. questioning myself like, oh, is there actually a fundamental bias I have towards these people? I, mean, mm -hmm. I think one other way, because when you mention voice, sometimes why I'm a little reticent when it comes to the feminist movement and mm -hmm. I tend not to associate with any movement, so mm -hmm. it's not just feminism, I tend to just wait for the issue issues that come up and then if it makes sense to me, I key in. Mm. Because I just feel that on both sides, whether men or women, people have that capacity to abuse collectives. Mm. So, mm -hmm. but when you come to talking about voice, I think one way to speak or to articulate yourself is through doing. If I was a plus size woman, I would just wear my plus size and be happy in my plus size. Mm -hmm. And by demonstrating it, going for the AVM, if people saw you looking as gorgeous as you are in your plus size, I think that will speak volumes. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So sometimes I find, I'm just suggesting that sometimes women go to war over things that really just being and doing and living and almost acting as though you didn't even recognize the war was there in the first place. But for me, can actually yeah, do more than what you're taking on every battle. Is the question I, 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 I wish that I started this conversation with, which mm. is just, um, in recognizing the importance of our voices as women, are we recognizing the voice as the voice for the people or for anybody or just women's voice for women alone? Because I have seen women who have very strong voices. We cannot take away the fact that there are people whose voices are stronger than the other, right? And when it comes to glaring situations that they should speak up for even the men or a boy child, they tell you, Nah, that is that is not, not my calling. what we are talking about. <laughs> that does not affect us. Let it come to me when it has to do with feminism. And I'm wondering, do we have to define? I understand when you do not understand that struggle at all. Like you said, you didn't think of, about it. I mean, you nobody would expect you to start advocating for a plus mm -hmm. size, except you have a plus size friend mm -hmm. that you've had to deal with her struggles with her, right? Mm -hmm. But nobody expects you. But there are general issues that we know Perfect that even when we're fighting fem, fem, the feminist um, um, battle, we know that we also need men to understand this movement, or we probably will not have any um, um, progress no in the, you know. So, so how do we get to understand that our voice as women should be the voice for the people and not just for women? I'm going to leave it to you to, to eat the bigger bones, but I just want to start with um, <laughs> what Evely said. Um, I think that that is too... Um, um, it's not enough, that idea of just me. I think that it's, it, it's even before this table, before this generation, that it's, it's very clear that when humans come together, when there's more people, the broom is stronger. So mm -hmm. apart from just one very confident, chubby lady going to the fashion show, doing her own thing. The effect that has is not enough in comparison to having a body, a collection no, don't get me of wrong. women. I'm not saying one chubby lady. I'm saying if, if she demonstrated it by demonstration Other rather than by follow. speaking, because her voice is one thing. But, but they, they, her, her they still some, there's still some another. significance in having that intentional movement. Maybe you might not call it one and name it and have a body and conference like it is. But what do you for use feminism. The intentional movement? That intention, I think, is what she's talking about because you're deliberately acting out your activism. Well, is, is it intentional if you're not adding other people and carrying them along? No, no, again, I, maybe there's several issues I mentioned. So one of them is I don't necessarily want to belong to a feminist movement, right. but if there's something like now where there's a, a project we're driving about sanitary, affordable sanitary towels, as the issues come up, I'll key in. Mm. But I've always found that when there is a collective umbrella, because once you say feminism, then people assume that 
there's a certain disposition you have towards men. And if I don't share that, why am I, why am I, why am I well, being forced you, well, to why, answer why that? Would the, well, why would the disposition of the, yeah, why would the perception of other people affect in regards what to you're doing? affect the Because the collectives cause. tend to be a shared identity I and, and you may not key into every aspect but, uh, okay, of that Okay, can identity. I ask one really quick question? Are you a Christian? Yes. But Christianity has a lot of perceptions. You I for one can't even uh, no, I'm glad stand, you brought that up. stand that, but I'm, I'm sure you would say that. No, 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 I'm glad you brought that up because even as a Christian, I don't generally if they say membership, I don't. They know me. But you that. still call yourself no, a but Christian. The reason I you do still identify the, the, with what that. I, what I have in common with anybody is that word of God. As long as we can agree on what is written, so, but we do you have an agreement. Have but common... anything else you're doing outside of that... I'm but you still have the tag of, Christ, of being because a Christian. Because Christianity is, is much more fundamental than a lot of these things we're discussing. A lot of these things are man-made. So a lot of them have are to they? do with... Yes. A lot of them have to do with human beings coming together and saying, oh, we... Because someone could identify... People would argue that Christianity could, is also man-made, If man I ask both but... of you to define feminism, you may have completely different definitions yeah, because no. they're human beings. But Christianity, there's a word... Okay, yes. I'm sure they will have different but um, as a feminist, as well. as we have two feminists on this table. Those that I identify openly with the movement right mm. are you very uncomfortable when you see or hear that a woman is openly saying i don't want to be tagged a feminist i am and Why? one of the reasons is because i, I kind of like christianity and i'll use that example mm -hmm. i could believe in god and i could follow go to church but i don't necessarily call myself let's say a pastor mm. because i'm more invested in it mm. but then that doesn't take away from the fact that if i'm a passive member of the church i'm still a christian mm -hmm. so i why can't i use that term but yeah. with, with feminism it's like oh but i don't champion anyone and i don't believe in everything but it, but the, the core of it for me, it's like so simple that everyone should be feminist. Now, if you then want to dive inside and talk about what you're focusing on the feminism and who's bad and who doesn't get it and all the people that are saying the wrong thing and the ideas against men, and there's so many levels to that, that yeah. to, then, to then define the major cause, which is so simple that we want equality for everyone. It just happens to be that the people who are oppressed right now are women, so that focus is on that. But if the mm. tables were flipped, we would still be championing the men that, that are oppressed. I know that a part oh, of feminism, if, even if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, gives everyone the ability of choice right so you can choose who you want to be yeah what you want to identify how as to and how you want to be treated and that's why so I if didn't have... you are coming to say that you're not comfortable with anybody saying don't call me a feminist no no, no 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 i'm not why comfortable is that with people not saying that they don't want to be feminist like i i, I understand if you if you say you don't want to be a feminist. you don't even that have to say why are you saying that, that was yeah. my question well, i don't i don't what i don't like is when people bash the feminism No, my movement. question was well, the first one. Right, okay, are you not comfortable? Why are you not comfortable when people well, you say don't, I'm no, not I'm feminist? Actually, maybe I got you wrong. I don't mind you saying that you're okay. not a feminist. Like okay. I, I don't have to identify as a Christian, and but then to say that oh, it's a bad thing, and oh, no, 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 no that wasn't yeah. my question. Well, yeah. I mean, I think so. so let me let me answer you your bashing first. feminism. Hopefully, and I can't speak for those who do it, but hopefully, people are critiquing aspects of feminist movement. They're being specific. So if, for example, just because it's a feminist movement and it's my fellow women, if they say something that for me doesn't all go well with yeah. what is just and what is equitable, just because they've taken that position, I will not align with this and I will critique it. No, so I have sure. no allegiance to no, say sure. sure. I must sure. identify. I'm sure there's a lot of things I disagree about. Yeah, I don't her, think, her yeah, I don't think okay. there's, there's a... Oh, once you're a feminist, and these are the guidelines, so you yeah. have to do this, you have to follow. Once this person says yes, then you must say yes mm. to. If this person bows you to, you must mm. bow. I don't yeah. think that's how it is. Even yeah, like she said, feminists like argue. But I'm gonna jump back to the first thing you said about like the intentionality about it. Mm -hmm. I think when you say, you know what, it takes one person to just you know wear what they want to wear and go out. And then others will wear it as well. Hopefully. We can apply to so many different things that women do. We can say, you know what, as a woman, I'm going to just walk out here with my bra. Mm -hmm. whatever. If I do that, I'm probably going to get stoned or taken to Yaba left because they're going to think I'm mad. Right. The importance of the voice is to give you that support to be able to, to do, do that. that. To be able to say you're going out, we're supporting you. And if I'm anything going happens you. to yeah. you, mm -hmm. we're going to be behind you. I, yeah. I guess maybe, I, I'm not against the voice, but perhaps what I was suggesting is an alternative because right. I find that a lot of times people um, go to war assuming that the only way to go to war is a confrontation when there are other more subtle, nuanced ways to we've actually win the that. battle. Yeah, we've, we've been doing that. No, no, that I'm not saying we're so not. I'm just still... I'm, yeah. I'm, oh, yes, it is. Uh, oh, yeah. And this yes, is why I'm not comfortable <laughs> with being yeah. called a but feminist. I, mean, but but I don't think about it. It doesn't even have to get to that point. Here's the thing. A lot of the things that we're presenting right now as feminists, they're not things that are hard. Yeah. The reason why they're hard is because people are opposing them. People are resisting, saying, no, you, you can't that do that. that because to my method of communication. Conditioning. People will resist you if you come you as if you're going to. But do you understand that? We don't want our clitoris to be cut anymore. Okay. How do you subtly say that? that? I, I, but I, guess I hear you. Guess who, I agree. Guess who's endorsing clitoris being cut? A lot of them are women. So why not start by emphasizing those women? We are doing that. Confrontation and war does not solve conditioning. It does not. 
So if you say we've gotten to the point where, oh, we've had the conversation, no we've sorted it enough, <laughs> and it has to now be confrontation, uh, it is not going to help any patriarchal mind. I feel like mind. it's been helping. I, I feel like we've been having but a I, lot. But you guys said on the other hand that you're meeting a lot of resistance. So we're saying there are other ways. There will always be resistance. Okay. All right. There will always be resistance. time for a break, but thank you so much, Ekene yeah. and Bele, for doing this with us. Thank and you. Um, enjoy the rest of this month. It's actually our month. Yes. Oh. All right. All right. Um, tea time will be back after this short break.